Hello, everybody. This is Scout. He is one of the lesson horses here at Great Heart Equestrian. Um, I am working with him because he is not quite yet lesson horse material. Scout has a few issues. He's really, really rushy under saddle. He um, kind of bolts, not necessarily like he's headed for the horizon, but um, my perception of it is that he lacks confidence, and so he leans on his rider, and oftentimes the riders that we have on him are green, and they are anxious, and so it feeds into his, his anxieties. And so what Scout really needs is he needs somebody who is going to help him learn how to manage himself instead of being micromanaged which is what is currently happening, which does not work for him. So another thing that he has an issue with is standing at the mounting block. He has a lot of anxiety about being mounted at the mounting block. So I'm going to work on that today. And then another thing I'm going to work on with him, it's not going to be anything in particular other than just I want him to walk and trot in a controlled manner where he is controlling himself. So as you can see here, he's already a little bit anxiety, already has a little anxiety, only already a little anxious. I'm just gonna slow everything down for him. So the reason why I'm walking around in circles is because he is anxious. He wants to walk around in circles, so I'm just gonna walk with him. Because something that we need to show Scout is that I'm a partner with him here. I'm not here to rough him up when he gets upset. So we're just gonna work with the mounting block for just a second. Usually I would break things all the way down and I would literally just do groundwork, just mounting block work with him. Hi, oh, yes, handsome. But being that he's in a lesson program, things are not ideal for his training. So I'm just gonna make them as ideal as we can make it. So what I'm gonna do with him here I just want to love on him when he's right here next to me. And I want to show him that me being up off the ground is not a threat to him. He's anticipating a lot. He thinks I'm going to jump right onto his back. That's not what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to call his bluff so that he can realize that it's not going to be the same thing always. One of the things with horses in the lesson program is because they are doing, they're often doing the same type of lessons over and over again, they start to anticipate things. And some horses, that's great. We have some really good schoolmasters that you could ride them with your eyes closed and your hands tied behind your back. But then for other guys like this that need a little more confidence, um, that need a little more help, having the same thing over and over, um, reinforcing the things he has anxieties about is not a good thing. So being that he's used for lessons, when he comes out, if he shows anxiety about the mounting block, he just has to get over it and we have to throw a rider on him and keep him going. So I am working with him pretty much every day uh, that he's not being heavily ridden in the lesson program so that we can change his mind on some of these things so we can break that um, pattern that that track that he thinks he's going down to something different all right I'm gonna ask him to walk up just a little bit so I have a little bit more of his back and so see now he's gonna swing his butt around because he's evading he knows that I'm gonna get on his back eventually so he's evading that I just want him to get used to me standing up here next to him. As you can see, he's looking behind him, but he's also paying very close attention to me. He says, at any moment, you could be hopping on me, and I'm not a fan of that. That's okay. Can I have you walk up just a little bit more? There we go. Awesome. So I'm going to stay here for a little bit until I see some signs of relaxation. There we go, he's licking, he's not licking his lips, he's popping his lips a little bit. That's not necessarily a sign of 
relaxation, but it is a sign that there are things going through his head. Lip popping can be boredom, it can be frustration, it can be a lot of things. I'm just going to stand here with him. This is a big one for him because he did not swing his butt out and he is almost at the mounting position. Another thing with this horse is that um, when he was first brought to the lesson program before I started teaching here, um, when he started to get more and more rushy, they just put higher bits on him. Up until today, he's been ridden in a corkscrew, which I am not a fan of corkscrews and sharper bits of that sort. So today I have him in a French link snaffle. I'm not going to ask him to go and canter off because I would have no breaks. He needs a lot more groundwork and in preparation for that. But today we are simply going to be working on me getting on him while he's calm. And then him walking and then maybe doing a light trot with him self-regulating instead of me pulling on his face or keeping him from exploding or anything like that. I'm going to reach over him onto the other side. A lot of times when I have horses who hate being mounted, I will act like they've never been mounted before. I'll kind of just restart him. So you see how his neck went up there? I can physically feel that he's tensed, and his top line, his nuchal ligament, has gotten a lot tighter. So he's anticipating me hopping on right now. But I'm going to prove to him that that is not the case. That's not what this means. Eventually, I will get on him, but only when he's in a relaxed state. So I'm looking for a little bit of relaxation here. I want a little bit of the dropped head. We probably won't get any licking or chewing because this horse has a significant brace response. He, I've only known him for a few days now, but he seems like the type to kind of bottle things up. And then it comes out when he can't take it anymore, which is why he bolts. So I am going to be working on allowing him to express himself and relieve his mental and physical tension regularly. It's all about self-regulating. If you can teach a horse to regulate themselves, they'll be much safer in the long run. I'm going to ask him to walk up just a little bit. I'm not even going to put pressure on his rein. I'm just going to move it forward, see what he does. And he would like to come all the way around. So I think I've done a small video on self-parking before. But ultimately, the name of the game is I'm not going to chase him around or anything, but I'm going to tell him that he can stand and be calm when he's right in front of me, right in that mounting position, or at least close to it. There we go. That's good enough. And without swinging our butt out, that is the big thing. So we've got a nice high neck here. He's very tense through his nuchal ligament. We're popping our lips a little bit. So I want to see what happens if I lean over him like that. What if I put a little bit of weight? All right, so I even didn't even put any weight in that stirrup. Nope, we're not going that way. Back up. I didn't put any weight in that stirrup, and he swung away. Good boy. There we go. That is what I've been looking for. Just a little bit of exhale, a little bit of licking and chewing. Messing with the stirrup here on this side. See how he's got his ears on me, his eyes are peeled. He says, what is this woman doing? 
He says, I'm not sure what she's doing, but it's not the one thing I think she's going to do, which is what I don't want her to do. So I'll tolerate it, right? And so I'll let him walk off, but he's only allowed to stop when he's right in front of me, right where I need him to be. There we go. And so, in fact, I think what I'm going to do, because I had plans on getting on him today, but I can see that this is really hard for him. I know it doesn't look like a lot because I'm not pushing him to get a reaction. If I were to ignore his signs, keep asking him to keep getting frustrated, yanking on him, you need to stand, you need to stand, you need to stand, then we would get a reaction. But I don't like to just... I'm never going to get a reaction out of horse just to videotape it um, so it can be documented. But any, anyways, uh, without getting on a tangent, I can tell that this is hard for him. He's processing a lot. He has a lot of anxiety about this. He does not trust me to get onto his back. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this bridle off of him. I'm going to go get a rope halter. And we're just going to work on seeing if I can sit on him today. Maybe. So usually, ideally in this situation, I would start a horse from the ground up. But since he is part of a lesson program, we do not have that ideal situation set up for us. Um, so, yeah. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to have him come around and ask him to park up next to me as if we were about to mount. And so the name of the game here is that he can, that was my fault. The name of the game here is that he can move if he'd like to, but he's only allowed to stay still and be calm right here. And so this isn't the first time I've done this with him. I've done one session. And so he kind of gets it. And so when he stands here, where is where I want him to be, parked up next to me, I'm going to let him sniff me. I'm going to tell him that he's a good boy. I'm going to look for things like that, the licking and chewing. And I just want him to relax here. I want this area right here to be the most relaxing and positive place. Because right now, he has some neural pathways in his brain that when he is in a situation that matches, you know, getting on and getting about to be ridden, he already kind of jumps to conclusions and gets down that path of anxiety. And so what I'm doing is creating new neural pathways and creating new experiences, new patterns that are more positive for him so that he begins to enjoy something that he previously disliked. I'm going to ask him to step up just a little bit here. As gently as I possibly can. I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm literally just going to pick up the rope here. Do just a little tap. And so there he swung his butt out. And that's a bit of a bad habit. I don't want that. So I'm just going to ask him to keep going. I'm going to ask him to just come up near me. There we go. It's a little bit better. I'll let him rest here for a minute. It's going to lick and chew a little bit. I'm going to ask him to keep going so we can get another chance at it being straighter. All right, I'm going to let him stay right here because he's nice and parallel to me, even though he's a little too far back. So my approach here, which is my approach with a lot of things, especially when we have horses that have bad habits, like running away at the mounting block when you're trying to ride or get on to ride, 
is that instead of trying to unteach or punish a bad behavior, I will instead teach a good behavior. And so right now, all I'm teaching him is that I just want him to stand right next to me, parked up right next to me. And so if I can teach him that, instead of getting angry at him every time he runs out from under me, it'll be a more positive experience. He'll be more willing to do it. He's going to engage with me instead of bracing against me. And over time, that bad behavior that I wanted to see gone will disappear over time because it'll be replaced by good behavior. So focus on what you want out of your horse, not what you don't want out of your horse. And I'm just making sure to give him lots of pets and scratches here. A little massage on his nuchal ligament. And the first... Um, session I did with him. Every time I would pet him here, he would raise his head, get tense along his back, his nuchal ligament would freeze up. And so I have responded by m massaging that area. That was really, really tense for him. I'm going to ask him to just step forward just a little bit. There we go. That's good enough. Good boy. And usually if I have a horse who's bad at the mounting block, there's some licking and chewing. We like that. And he's in that perfect place for me to mount. He came over to check me out. Give me a little sniff on the leg. So whenever I have a horse who is really bad about being mounted, I like to just pretend like they've never been ridden before, starting them over as if they're a three or four year old that I'm starting under saddle. So what I'm gonna do here is as he's here, I'm going to see if he'll let me lay over him a little bit. Because another thing that this is doing, again, with the uh, neural pathways, is I'm breaking up that pattern, that chain of events that usually happens with him. So usually what happens is that somebody tacks him up, they bring him in here, they go to get on him, he fidgets, he fusses, they grab somebody to hold him still so that they can get on, and then he shoots off and goes and starts the lesson. And so by intentionally setting things up so it looks like that, but then completely changing the game, this will help change his mind on things, help him realize that it's not always going to be that same pattern that he had before that um, created this anxiety for him. All right, and so since he's standing here so nicely for me, I'm going to keep this lead rope loose because I am reading his body language. I am not gonna push him past where he's uncomfortable. So I don't believe that he's gonna bolt. Of course, that's, that's my bet that I'm taking with my safety, um, as any horse trainer does do, doing anything. But the reason why I'm not gonna choke up on the lead rope is because, let's see if it even happens, is that it's part of that, mm-hmm, it's part of that pattern again. When you're about to get on your horse, you shorten up on your reins, you get on. And so I want to make things look a little bit different for him. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right foot, not my left foot like I would usually put in the stirrup to mount my right foot. I'm just going to put it in the stirrup, see if we can stand still while I put a little weight in it. You guys can't see it, but I do have my right foot in the stirrup. I'm wiggling it a little bit. He's coming around to see me. And I'm going to release by taking my foot out of the stirrup, giving him a pat again. All right. Now I'm going to ask him to go and repark. I'm going to ask him to go again because he's not quite close enough. So like I said in the beginning, the name of the game is that we'll just keep going around until we get it right. 
We got a little bit of licking and chewing there. I'll let him stand here a second and ask for a little bit more in a second. And so as you can see here, he's really, really light off the pressure. I haven't done any groundwork really with him. I mean, this is technically groundwork, but I haven't done any yielding to pressure stuff with him, anything like that. Are you nibbling me? I know, he's giving me a little nuzzle. I haven't done any groundwork with him, but yet he's very, very um, responsive to just the rope halter. So I have no reason to believe that this horse, I mean, I don't believe that any horse needs a corkscrew, but this horse absolutely does not need a corkscrew bit because he's very sensitive, very responsive. He just is uneducated and doesn't know what his rider is asking for. All right, so I'm gonna put my right foot in the stirrup again here. Very good, man. All right, I'm going to ask him to walk around one more time, see if we can park up a little bit better. Awesome. And see, he's parked pretty perfectly. His butt is out just a little bit. He's reaching around to give me a little nibble. All right, now I'm going to put the left foot in the stirrup. And so the reason why I put the right foot in the stirrup first is because the left foot is part of that pattern again. I'm going to block him from nibbling me because he's getting a little too friendly. He wants to eat my boots. But the reason why I put the right foot in first is because it's breaking up that pattern again. When I put my left foot in, I imagine that he might try to walk off. But we'll see. And he's standing perfectly. His ears are back on me. His nuchal ligament is solid right now. So he's got a little bit of stress here. I'm gonna wait for some blinking, some licking and chewing, some relaxing. So I would not get on him right now because he is not necessarily in a free state, but there we go, there's the release. He was processing for a little bit, thinking about stuff saying, all right, is this lady going to hop on me and run me around in a circle now? And I said, no, that's not what we're doing. The thing about horse training that I will always, always, always preach is that if you take the time to do this slow, boring stuff over and over and over again, and give your horse the opportunity to process everything, at their own pace then later things will come much easier because you have that foundation down you have that communication down your horse understands that you're considering them in your decisions so we've got lots of blinking we've lowered the neck our nuchal ligament is relaxed here i'm gonna go ahead and put my foot back in the stirrup see what happens he's reaching around to look at me See what's going on. Oh. And so I just want to sit here. I don't want to ask him to do anything. He stayed perfectly still for me getting on. I'm not going to poke. I'm not even going to pick up my rein. And I want to sit here until I get a release from him, and then I'll get off. So you guys probably can't hear, but he's actually making some squeaking noises. 
There we go. There's a lick in the chew. So we had a little bit of labored breathing, and then we had a release of tension, a lick and a chew. And so now that he's relaxed a little bit, I'm gonna hop off of him. Oh, there it is. So now you can see all that tension he was carrying, all that anxiety. He's very, very good at not showing it. He's very good at keeping it inside. That was a lot for him. That was a lot for me to ask him to hold his composure while I get on. And I appreciate that he did that for me.